quick note before the video, sorry if it sounds like I have a cold, it's because I do. Enjoy! <laughs> Hello lights, it's your girl North here. Today is a brand new Life is Full of Phantoms conspiracy video. Let's go. Now this video's main focus will be on new characters that haven't yet been introduced and what subplot they're going to be part of. These new characters are Selena Vera Archer, Veronica Viper, Peiko Phasmite, and Guys. Now first off, let's just talk about all these characters and how we know that they're part of the same subplot. Well first of all, we see them all in this teaser picture right here. Second, we do get some information on some relationships between these characters from their character descriptions. So we do know that they're part of the same subplot. Anyway, let's discuss each character and what relationships I think these characters have. First off, Matilda and her younger sister, Selena. According to her character description, Selena is mostly calm, but she can turn very stormy and very ugly. And she and Matilda have a very tight relationship, which may seem kind of obvious, but keep in mind this is Life is Full of Phantoms and we've seen some pretty dysfunctional families. So it is useful to know, for the purposes of this video, that Matilda and her sister are allies, not enemies. Because basically what we're gonna be doing to analyze exactly what their subplot is going to be is discussing their different friendships, alliances, or which ones are enemies and we're going to use that to divide them into two separate groups. And then we're going to see how these relationships might change and how these groups might become one. So we've acknowledged that Matilda and her sister are on the same side of these two teams. Next we're going to talk about Geis. According to his character description, he had an undying love for Matilda but she never returned the same feelings so it bittered him and made him angry. You might think his crush on Matilda means they're on the same side, but I don't think that's the case. Look at this teaser picture. It shows Fracto just deathly staring down at Matilda, terrifying her to death, while Guy's watch is very amused and very satisfied. I think that because of Geis' undying love for Matilda, but the fact that she never returned the same feelings, he eventually turned on her and sort of became against her. Because keep in mind, he was bittered because she didn't want to be with him. So naturally, if he's so bittered by her, he probably will have abandoned the role of just having a crush on her and will eventually kind of grow to hate her for the pain and suffering that he caused her. But eventually he'll realize that he inflicted this upon himself by not moving on. But for now, let's focus on the fact that they are going to be an Enemies. Team 1, Matilda and Selena. Team 2, Guys. What about Veronica Viper and Peiko Phasmite? Well, let's start with Veronica. She's a descendant of Medusa, and she can very easily put venom into anyone. She also wants a rebellion in the Phantom universe, but she can't get anyone to join because she's so intimidating, and she threatens to use her venom on anyone who stands in her way. Now, immediately what I'm getting from this character is that she's a good character, and she has good intentions, but she's a bit too strong-spoken and intimidating for most people to handle. Let's focus on the fact that she wants to create a rebellion. We don't know much about the Phantom universe, but we do know that it's not really in the best state, and we also know that Fracto is an evil tyrant. So let's just assume that she's rebelling against Fracto. This is a good thing. If she's rebelling against Fracto, that's a really good thing. Fracto is evil, so she's a good character if she's against him. However, she is still intimidating and she still wants to, you know, suck her venom into a bunch of people, so... Anyway, I'm not gonna put her anywhere just yet, but that should give you a rough idea of what I think she's going to become as a character. Next is Peiko Phasmite. According to his character description, he lives alone, isolated on a volcano, and he's really good friends with guys. So you might think this puts him on Guys' side, but as shown from this teaser trailer, they might actually be against each other. He sort of laughs at Peiko and says, Oh, Peiko Phasmite, the guy from the Phasmite comics. While Veronica seems to agree with him, saying the only thing he's good for is cooking. An important fact here is that both Guys and Peiko are fire tenuums. Most fire tenuums can use their fire for cooking. But Guys can't, because though both him and Peiko are fire tenuums, he is a blue fire tenuum, meaning that his fire is much hotter and much more dangerous. He might not be good for cooking, but he can definitely win in a battle. Judging how Veronica and Guys are sort of ganging up on Peiko, and she's making fun of him for only being good for cooking, while this is not the case with Guys, tells me that these two are on the same side. But wait, I thought that Guys and Peiko were friends. Well, this part's a bit confusing, but here's what I think happened. They start off as friends, but then Guys betrays him for Veronica. This may seem kind of random, but I just think it's very likely. We know that they start off as friends, but also that, you know, they're obviously enemies here. Look at them fighting. Look at this. 
You might say, well, that's just a friendly argument. Does this look like a friendly argument to you? This means that Peiko is on Matilda and Selena's side. So perfect, we got Selena, Matilda, and Peiko on one side, and Geis and Veronica on the other. So how is this going to change? If you look at their character descriptions, notice that they're all good people. It's just some of them are misguided or bittered or misled in some way. So they're all good characters, or at least let's assume they are. We also know that their subplot involves Cantu Holman's laboratory. We can see some shots of some of the characters in this lab right here. And we both know that one of the Cantu Holman amulets are probably in the laboratory. So they'll probably manage to find one. We also know that he was on the verge of creating millions of these things before he, you know, died. So probably what'll happen is that one of the characters will end up figuring out how to mass produce these and they'll be able to use it for all sorts of good purposes, like helping Matilda free all the other Amaguams from Amagua Island. I know some of these assumptions seem kind of random, but that's basically what theorizing is. But yeah, those are my main assumptions for the new characters, but I'm just gonna quickly focus on the fact that Tashiana will become the Queen of Phasmia. Look at this episode name. There is an episode called The New Queen of Phasmia. Do you see where I'm going with this? Jeez, I wonder who could become queen. Hmm. Yeah, guys, come on. There's only one character that could even become queen at all. Like, Tashiana's the only possible answer to this. And that, to me, would honestly be, like, the best ending for her. I mean, she's obviously not a very good parent, but she is a good person, and she deserves something good. I think what she really deserves is to finally rule a kingdom of her own the way the citizens deserve to be ruled, and to fix the Phantom Kingdoms and do what Fosai had always wanted wanted to do, but died before he could do. Anyway, I think that's all I really have to say. To summarize, I think that it will start with Veronica Viper and Geis having an alliance, and eventually Geis betraying his friend Peiko, causing Peiko to side with Matilda and Selena. And there'll be sort of this rivalry, and I don't really know exactly what they're going to be fighting over, let's just, you know, determine that as we go, but over something, probably involving the Holman's laboratory, but they'll eventually realize that they want the same thing, and will set their differences aside and work together to maybe best produce Holman's amulets? I don't know. Maybe? Also, Tashiana will become the Queen of Phasmia because that is the only possible explanation for this episode name. With that, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and stay clawsome, possum, and fantastic. Bye bye